they got told a story. That's a new thing I'm starting. You beat a team real bad, you told them a story. I think it just might take 20 years for the person with the talent, the endurance to arrive on earth, like to be born and then make it to the NBA before we see this record broken. And then he just sprays a fire extinguisher all in the air. Yeah. I laughed out loud at that part. What happened? He said, quote, I just lost track of time. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, I want to ask you something. Yeah. I recently rewatched End of Watch, Jake Gyllenhaal, Michael Pena, cop movie. I'm well aware of the movie, yeah. It's devastating. It's a devastating movie. It's really, really great. It's super intense. It's really, there are parts of it that are so much fun. Yeah. Uh, Gyllenhaal and, and Pena have incredible chemistry. The chemistry and is amazing. They feel like they have been friends for years and years and years, mm-hmm. and they feel like they have been working that job as as police officers in Los Angeles for years and years and years. It's just watching them together, even when they're just like talking, goofing around, whatever. You just that's want that's the best part of the movie. That's it's the best part of the movie. You out. just want more of it. You just want yeah. as much of that as you can get. And then, of course, it ends in a horribly tragic way. But as I was rewatching it this most recent time, I was like trying to will will it into a different ending. I wanted it to end differently. Mm -hmm. I wanted for the horrible thing that happens to not happen. And then I started thinking about were there other movies that I felt that way about? And then I started thinking about you because everything always leads back to Jason. And I was curious (laughs) if you have a, do you have a movie that you, that if you could just like use your brain power would change the way that it ends? Yeah, I think E.T., The Extraterrestrial. Wow. I wanted oh, way um, back. Yeah, I feel like ET should have stayed on Earth <laughs> because. <Okay. laughs> I mean, first of all, think about ET's the rest of that crew. How it's like, wait, we got to fucking turn around? Are you fucking serious? <laughs> we got to go back. We got to go we get. Just, we got to go pick them up. We, we just dropped them off. Pick them up. We just let. We, what? <laughs> How how much that stunk for them, you know. This is before we even get to how emotional Elliot is to like lose his his friend. I'm not saying Et needs to stay like getting experimented on by the government. I'm saying like couldn't he and just like Elliot hang out? But I do think Et didn't really like have to face the repercussions of just being tardy and not and losing track of time like that. And the, my other thing is like. <laughs> I think, I think the rest of the crew needed to lo- to learn a lesson too because these are guys. You guys are astronauts. You guys are scientists, biologists. <laughs> you just, like are the most brilliant aliens who have been sent, you know, soldiers on a mission from whatever planet you are from, and you guys, you guys don't like count. Do a quick. Hey, <laughs> sound Do off. Do a head count. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And you just like pull pull away. I think you guys got to face it. You guys just should just have to leave, and then Et should just have to stay there. And Elliot should have to have his friends. I I, I wish Elliot and Et would have just been <laughs> been homies together for the rest of the time. That does bring up an interesting thing that I had never thought about before this moment, which is when we send a space shuttle into outer space with several people on it, they yeah. all have a specific job. That's right. What was ET's job on the ship? What was he I, responsible for? I, he, was the, he was the botanist. He was doing like plant stuff. B- but like to your point, when we send people up into space and then we got to go back or pull away or something, people are like, hey, is everybody on the space shuttle? Everybody on the I ship? Don't know. Good, let's they go. They left Matt Damon. They left Matt Damon on Mars. <laughs> yeah, but they thought that was <laughs> the circumstances. <laughs> Also, Michael Pena in that movie as well. Every movie would be better with Michael Pena. He's the <laughs> he's the guy who flies the spaceship. He should have stayed. He yeah. should have not. He should have not left them. He should have learned they from End of Watch. They see how bummed they were to go back. Remember how they yeah. were like, "Wait a second! Oh my God! Wait, we got to oh like cut. Now we got to stay up here. We got to turn around." Wait, I changed my mind. He did learn from End of Watch because he stays with a guy. He follows Jake Gyllenhaal, and that's how he ends up dead. And this time he was like, fuck, <laughs> fuck that white guy. I'm out of here. 
<laughs> you want to start the show? Yeah, let's start it. From Wondery, I'm Shay Serrano. And I'm Jason Concepcion. And this is Six Trophies. Hello, I'm Jason Concepcion, and welcome to Six Trophies, a podcast series hosted by myself and Shay Serrano, in which we comb <laughs> through all the NBA news from the past week and hand out six pop culture themed trophies for six basketball related activities. In this episode, LeBron sets an unbreakable record. Chet's card gets declined. The Timberwolves and the Clippers go back in time. All that and more. Let's hand out some trophies. <laughs> You know what I want, Jason? I want a gun. I want a big gun, a big like elephant gun that when you shoot it, the sound that comes out is that is, is that when you sound? go, hello. <laughs> that's what I want it to be every time. <laughs> every time you shoot the gun, that's the sound I want it to. <laughs> I want yeah, one it to of those, make. one of them, one of them like old joints from like a Bugs Bunny cartoon where the end yeah, of yeah, it yeah. is like the end of a trumpet that like blares exactly. out. Yeah. That's exactly what I want. That's the only gun I'll ever own. It's a big cartoon Bugs Bunny <laughs> gun with a flared bell bottom outer shell that's that screams hello <laughs> whenever you shoot it. <laughs> Make that gun and then I'll go buy a okay. gun. We do two sets of trophies. The big trophies and the little trophies. The big trophies are first. These ones are the same every week. First up. The Denzel Washington and Training Day Trophy given out to whoever it is who had the best overall performance of the week. This week's winner, the King, LeBron James. Oh, my God. This guy. It's uh, 40,000 points. 40,000. Uh, which, which he achieved uh, in a loss to the Denver Nuggets. But this, here's the question. First of all, here's the, un okay. unreal achievement. Unreal. 40,000 regular season 40, points. 40,000 regular season points. You count playoffs, he's over 48,000. He's already uh, nearly 2,000 clear of Kareem. So here's the question. Is anybody ever going to get north of whatever it is that James stops at? Nobody will ever break this record. This is an unbreakable really? record. It's unbreakable. Who could do it? Who well, could do it? I, Here's my point. Here's my thing. I think it just might take 20 years, 30 years for the person with the talent, the endurance, the the dedication to taking care of their body to arrive on earth, like to be born and then make it to the NBA before we see this record broken. I th I think eventually someone will break it, but I think it'll be like 40 years from now that this person may even show up. I don't think anybody will break it while we're alive. I don't think that anybody will ever case. break it ever, right? But certainly not while we're alive. I saw I saw a thing that that sort of puts it all into into like a grander context. Cuz you could go, "Oh, Kevin Durant is 12,000 points behind LeBron James." Like you could say that. Okay, sure. Uh but the one that that really that just crawled inside of my brain and made me go like Fucking hell, this guy is Luca right now. Assuming assuming Luca plays in the final twenty two games of the season, right now he's averaging thirty four point five points per game. Right, that would he would finish out this season a little over eleven thousand six hundred points. He would need to play. He would need to average thirty points per game in every game of every season for 12 years straight. That's I mean it's not going to happen, but that's crazy. It's not going to happen. And and gonna this happen. is and he is right now the best scorer we have in the NBA. And he would have to do that. He would have to do that for 12 years straight every single game, 82 games, you would have to score 30 or more points per game to catch LeBron James. Nobody's going to ever catch this guy. Okay, so Durant is 12,000 behind him. He would need to you know, average like 27 until age 40 to reach 40,000. <laughs> That's crazy. Do we think he does it? I don't think no. I'm going to say no based on no. his injury history. Embiid is 28,000 points behind James. There's no way just based mm -mm. on mm -mm. Embiid's injury history. You mentioned Doncic. I just don't think that clip is possible. Now, Victor is interesting uh, because I don't think Victor will get to 40K 
But I think that when you compile all the counting stats that Victor has, that it's going to be its own kind of record. Like, I think when you pile up points, rebounds, assists, blocks for Victor, Mm -hmm. it's going to be some other weird... I think he's going to have, like, the most blocks for anybody that ever scored X amount of points. Right, 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 right. Um, But I don't think anybody currently in the league even has a shot. No, nobody. Nobody who's alive right now could do this. Not a single person. You know what's really wild to think about is... Okay, LeBron James has now scored more points in the NBA than anybody ever in the history of the entire world. And the, and and if you talk about LeBron James as a basketball player, scoring is never the first thing you mention. Like never. It's never that's not you're like, "Oh, he was an incredible scorer." The way you talk about about uh Kevin Durant. You know what I mean? Like or or Yeah, Luka. he was always he, he was always like in a flow of the offense type of player. Right. Um, imagine had he decided he was just going to be only focus on that. He might have 50,000 by now, but he does all of this other stuff. And still, he still has scored more points than anybody ever by a wide margin. I mean, by a insane. wide, wide margin. Fucking LeBron James. Um, I just, I, it's I just incredible. Ben Golliver, um, uh, stats and advanced stats NBA writer, uh, posted on Twitter a really an incredible graph of LeBron James's uh, career scoring. This is crazy. James scored his first 10,000 points in the exact same number of games it took him to go from 30,000 to 40,000. <laughs> 10,000. Like, what are, what are 10, we doing? First 10,000 in 368 games, 10 to 20 in 358 games. I mean, it, the, the, the consistency... Over the course of his career for 20 years is the thing that I th- is the hardest because guys will score. Guys will average nah. 35. But yeah. will they do it for 20 years? Like, I, I, it's just years. like, I don't see that. I don't see it happening. I wrote in, uh, in basketball and other things. There's a, an early chapter in there when, when I'm talking about Michael Jordan, right? And like, is he the greatest basketball player of all time? Let's assume that he is. That's how the chapter starts. Let's assume Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time, right? But then it goes through a list of like, or maybe you think it's somebody else. Uh, maybe you measure it by like, were they the best for the longest amount of time? In which case it's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's what I wrote in 2016. And now in, in 2024, I, that sentence is not even true anymore because it's LeBron, even by just, even yeah. if you're only measuring yeah. that metric, like he yeah. is, he is turning all of my sentences into toothpaste and I don't appreciate it. I don't like and it. One more thing because okay. one more. he's one more. still, the chase down blocks are still, that's the other thing. We're like 20 years in. He's still like running after guys on the break. He's still doing it. And blocking them. He did it to Jordan Poole the other night. Like that's <laughs> still part of the arsenal, separate and apart from the unbelievable scoring, which again, as you mentioned, is not the primary thing in his career. Like just uh, unbelievable longevity from the king. Incredible. What? Okay, last question, and then we're going to move to the next trophy. Yeah. What, what, could you, what could you accrue 40,000 of? What could you get 40,000 of? Well, I'll tell you this. I hmm. uh, I used to play a lot of Halo 2, and okay. the video game on Xbox, and you could check your stats. And after my Halo 2 career was over, I logged in to see the total hours, and I had played just shy of 10,000 hours of Halo 2 in like three years. So I'm not sure that I could ever, and that was like, I was playing it for eight hours a day at certain points. So I don't know what I could get to 40,000 of. Maybe nacho <laughs> chips. <laughs> that I was thinking something like that. It's yeah. gotta be so. I think uh, rice. Like I eat a lot of shrimp fried rice. I can, I can I think 40,000 pieces of rice. I could do that. I could do that. Next trophy, the Lauren Hill. You might win some, but you just lost one trophy. Give it out to whoever it is who had the worst performance of the week. This week's winner, Intuit Dome Security. Oh, will you explain, will you explain this, please? Sure. So the Intuit uh, Dome is the Clippers' new home. 
and uh, it, it's almost completed. It will be ready for next season, the 2024-2025 season. It's almost all the way done, and you can actually see what it looks like inside uh, via the TikTok videos of a group of teens who broke into the Intuit Dome recently and just like kind of ran friends. around, walked around. <laughs> yeah, they, they jumped over the fence, ran across the parking lot, somehow entered the building where all the lights and stuff were on. Like it's on, like it's, it's, it's powered up and just like ran around. Security nowhere to be seen you know those guys were nowhere. like on their phones back in some trailer somewhere like <laughs> <laughs> not even worried about it nobody's He's gonna break in here who's gonna break in here guys Why could they break <laughs> you know that there it was a very serious meeting the day after these videos oh hit. my god <laughs> uh, and i just you know uh, and one more thing to the kids like cover your faces next time you do this your thoughts on this I thought I thought a couple of things. Number one, it looked like an incredible time. It did it's, look like fun. <laughs> the the way that they shot the videos, they they have done this a bunch before. You can go on their TikTok page and see they've they've snuck into uh, various different places, SoFi Stadium. To uh, they've snuck onto the soccer field at the soccer games. They snuck into Dodger Stadium, I believe. This is a thing that they do, right? And they shoot it and they put music over it. And it's just like a, it's like you're watching a TV show of like two friends having the best time of their, of their lives. We did almost this exact same thing when we made Primo in one of the episodes, the kids sneak into the amusement park after hours, they turn everything on. And then it's just like a montage of them having fun at different places. They do the exact same thing in this video. They look like the two, two absolute best friends just having the times of their lives. Uh, the, there's a part in there where they they find basketball courts, like NBA regulation basketball courts. The the the, <laughs> the court itself isn't there, but the rim and everything is up. And they just start shooting around. There's one part where the kid shoots a shot, and makes it, and then he just sprays a fire extinguisher all in the air. Yeah, I laughed out loud at that part. I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was great. I love watching uh, kids just having a good time. As yeah. as a parent, I have two. I have uh, three sons. The twins are are sixteen, headed toward seventeen in a couple of months. So they're about the same age as these these kids uh, appeared here. There's also the 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 baby who's eleven. Uh, but I really like watching like kids just being carefree and having fun. You read about it afterward, and they're like, "There's a chance they could go to jail for six months." You can't. That you thank can't you. let this happen. On, thank you you thank can't you. let this happen. Thank what you have to do. Is you got to invite, you got to give these kids season tickets. Make them clean up, make them clean up the dome for a little bit and then let them, ha let them give them a job or something. Yeah. Like turn this into a good thing. Don't be, don't be jerks about it. This was a fun time. Uh, it's, it just looked great. It just looked great. I and love again, kids having a good is, time. This is y'all's fault for this your one, fault. not hiring enough security. This is this a city your whole six job. million people. What do you think is going to happen? Just keep this them out. This is your whole it's job. It's not that hard. And you failed. Have you, <laughs> have you ever snuck into somewhere? Uh, well, I'll say I, I've been in a, in a friend group that used to sneak into fish shows. The band Fish, fish the from band? Vermont, P-H-I-S-H. -S -S <laughs> uh, and this was in the days before scan tickets. Where, where the, the move would be you, someone, you know, they ripped a ticket and then they'd pass it back to the person behind you would be like a setup. So you'd have one person with a legitimate ticket, rip the ticket. They'd pass the stub back to the other person and they'd hand it to the guy like it's a real one. And as soon as it comes out of the hand, they run. They just run into the crowd. <laughs> and it worked. It worked a, a lot of times. It worked a bunch. We used to sneak into SeaWorld all the time. We had... Wait, how uh, do you get into SeaWorld? <laughs> we had... You have... You need one friend who has a season pass. This was nice. in the early 90s, right? Yeah. And the season passes back then, they didn't have your picture on it. They didn't, do, it was like you just showed it as you walked past. They didn't scan them to do whatever. And so you go, one person has a season pass. That's all you need is one friend who could do it. And they go in, show the pass. And yeah. then you meet up around the back where there's a gate and you just pass the, the, the you hand the pass through the gate to the friend. And then you get like six people in that way off of the, off of the one pass. We did that a lot. We did, we snuck into the movies a lot. Just prop open that. Oh yeah. I, I, that I, that exit door. Count, that's, I, that I, sort of stuff. 
I snuck into yeah. the movies for a solid 10 years. <laughs> you know, I, would, I used to do movie day where I'd buy a ticket to one movie and then stay all day and watch oh, three yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leave those kids alone. Let them have a good time. Next trophy. The Dominic Toretto, I live my life a quarter mile at a time trophy. Give it out to a person or a team who made a short-term decision with no Uh-oh. regard for future consequence. I've been so excited for this one. This week's winner. This week's winner. This week's winner. Chet for challenging Wimby. He Don't came to San it. Antonio and he tried to challenge Wimby. Don't do it. In front of everybody. Don't the Spurs do had, it. The Spurs had been on the road for a month. This is their first home game back in back in uh, San Antonio. They do the, they do the rodeo road trip every year right. through the month of February. It's the last day of February. It's Leap Day. Oklahoma City is in town. It's Wimby versus number Chet. one team in the West. Oh, it's Wimby versus Chet. Just doing, just giving you everything you could want. Both have a great game. It's a close game throughout. Wimby starts taking over in the fourth quarter, hits back-to-back threes, something crazy like that. He's just dominating, and Chet decides. Game's sort of on the line in this moment. I'm going one-on-one. I'm going one-on-one against the big fella. I love, I love the courage, the determination, the, Me the, too. the ruthlessness to be like, Me too. I'm going to stick this in Wimby's eye. In front of, in front of all of his fans. I love that about Chad. Let's be clear. Winning this award is not a, a it's not a bad thing. This is a yeah. good thing. This is what we want. We, we wanted him to do this. They both play the same position. They're both superstars or headed towards superstardom. They're going to be compared to each other for the entirety of their career. Oftentimes, players in these situations would not guard each other. They'll stay away That's from right. each other on purpose. And this time, they were going at it. That's right. Trying to take each other's head off. Chet tries to go one-on-one. It ends with him on the floor, his shot blocked, the ball in Wimby's hands, game over. I was fucking losing my mind. It It was was so much fun. So much fun. I will say when Chet, when he, when he dropped to the ground after the block, and by the way, it wasn't like a fingertip block, like Wemby swallowed it up. Whole (laughs) hand. Whole Whole hand. He's like, he threw the sunroof over it. Like it was, (laughs) it was, it was not going. Uh, the way Chet kind of crumples and sits there for a second, it reminded me of that Dominique dunk on Larry Bird. We talked about it before. Yeah, when he just when, is down on the when ground. When Larry just was like, what happened? And you could see, I felt like that same thought process was happening where Chet was just like, well, what happened? I thought I had the space. I got, I, he got me. There's a great, a great like half a beat after, after the block. Chet goes down, stumbles, falls down to the ground. Wimby gathers the ball and he turns. This is on the, we're on the Spurs, we're near the Spurs bench. And he turns, faces the Spurs bench and just screams. And you knew, you knew in that moment that they had talked about this. They had talked about there's going to be a time, there's going to be a moment when it's you and him versus each other. And you bite that motherfucker's head off is what you like. They had talked about it and he did it and he was so happy. And then after yeah. the game, he's doing his post game press conference and he's like, I miss this shit. I love this it's shit. Like, he's like, oh. <laughs> and again, get, Chet had a, Chet had a great game. He was eight I, for 12 Chet from the field, game. 23 points, seven rebounds, five assists. He did everything you can do. He just got beat this one time. Sometimes you get beat. I yeah, I mean, like again, I love the fact that Chet was like, I'm a I'm a challenge him and he had a great game. It's just uh it's hard to escape the feeling right now, and who knows, we're very, very early days in both of these young men's careers, but it feels like Wemby is is Drexler pilling Chet. Uh-oh. 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 It could be. Like, it, it could it just be. feels that way. Yeah. Because uh I mean, as good as Holmgren is, and he's very, very he's good. Really good. Star he's player. really good. Wemby over the last like eight games, month and a half, two months, has has gone to a crazy level. Crazy. Right. Insane. Right. 
It's just oof. And then he follows that up against Indy, 31, 12, 6, and 6. Good team, too. Like, Indy's, <laughs> like, a, Indy's a good team. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It just makes me so happy, Jason. I don't even care that the Spurs have only won one game all season because we get to we <laughs> we just keep getting these moments with Wemby. Oh my god. It's wild to think that this is the worst he'll be. <laughs> this is the floor. This is the this worst is that the he's gr- gonna be. This, this is, is the, the floor. ground floor. This is the first level. Yeah. Of the video game. This is the first <laughs> level. He's like, what? And you and you're just seeing like he's so much more comfortable now. He under, like the the physic the passing that has emerged recently, where he's mm-hmm. hitting guys with these behind the backs, and guys even like it, it, guys are understanding. Like if I give it up, if I give it up to Wemby, I'm gonna get it back if I cut. Like all these kind of and you can't his vision at seven four. Like you can't obstruct his vision. So he's seeing guys. The complete game that he has, it's scary. I'm terrified. Yeah. I'm frightened. And a, a thing that makes this even a little more fun is that, number one, Chet's good. We've established that. But the Thunder are much better than the Spurs. So much better than the Spurs. So it doesn't matter uh, how much Wimby might outplay Chet in a game. The Thunder fans can always be like... We- that, that's the first time y'all beat us all season. We already beat y'all twice. We're the best team in the West right now. Like, there's there's no give on either side right now. Spurs fans are like, we've got the better player. Thunder fans are like, we've got the better team. Our guy should win Rookie of the Year because of this. Spurs are like, no, our guy should win Rookie of the Year because of this. And it's just, it's great. It's just, it's going to build and build and build. They're going to hate each other and hate each other and hate I each other. I love it. It's, eventually. It, it's almost my favorite kind of situation where you know that the other team guys are mad but they have plenty of reason to pretend that they're not mad about it mm-hmm, like you know mm-hmm. chet is pissed you know chet he's is so like, mad Fuck. he's so mad he's so mad <laughs> and you know thunder fans are like god damn it but like they're they have to pretend like they're not mad and they have a lot of reason to not be mad i love when i love when that's the case i love when you know somebody's mad but they're pretending yeah. they're not and and the, the the inverse will happen here at some point chet will get wimby and it'll be the same the same sort of thing and and it's just where Zuri is so mad right now that he keeps having to play this clip he's so mad I wonder how many times if I say it like four times in a row will he just run it back to back <laughs> wimby, to back wimby, wimby. <laughs> if I just go wimpy 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 <laughs> he needs it we need to like we gotta get oh uh, my God. We got to get uh, him one of the, like a sampler or something, like an Akai <laughs> or like a Roland SP404 so that he could just be like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Next trophy, the Daniel Plainview. I've abandoned my child. I've abandoned my boy trophy, which is given out to player, team, or whatever it is we're temporarily giving up on for the week. This week's winner, the Clippers and the Timberwolves for abandoning the 21st century. <laughs> And the Clippers' eighty-nine to eighty-eight victory in Minneapolis last week. What I happened? Mean, <laughs> what even happened? Even looking, even look. I only caught the the uh, second half of this game, but even looking at the score now, I'm like, wait, when did this eighty-nine to eighty-eight? <laughs> did they stop at halftime? What's yeah, going on here? <laughs> I mean, it was just a uh, a poor shooting night from both teams, and then. Man, this game featured the kind of emblematic brain fart that I think is the thing you worry about with this young oh, Timberwolves team. Oh, man. End of the game, Anthony Edwards opted for a layup with three seconds left. Team down 89-86. Uh, Coach Chris Finch later would say that that was not what they were going for. Uh, <laughs> And it was just, it was just like a old school rock fight that I think brings up a lot of um, concerns for both teams. One, the the uh, the lack of kind of late game execution and IQ for the uh, Timberwolves, who are a very young team. You know, Anthony Edwards, twenty two, he's going to do, he's going to do uh, stuff that is maybe not the smartest on the court at the given moment. And then for the Clippers, I think who have been kind of wobbling post All Star. Without Russell Westbrook, who broke his hand, um, they're just like not – they lack that pep 
that juice, that athleticism. They have a lot of really skilled guys who are kind of slower, older, are not like attack the rim type of guys. And and uh, what you saw was this game, which again was just like seemed like it came straight out of 1997. Did, did you like it? Were you happy? No. I hate no. that. Listen, when, <laughs> when this style of play was happening, you didn't know that there could be anything else. And I was, I'm a Nick fan. So, you know, I, I was kind of like brought up in this style of basketball that was like, you grab the guy, you, you like grab him, but then you just hope that eventually you could score enough points through just like sheer brute force to get to like 81 or something, 81, 80 versus the heat. Um, <laughs> but I no, I don't want to watch that stuff again. I I challenge anybody also go back and watch any random game from like on YouTube from like anywhere from like 1990 to 2003 and just watch it. And you're going to be like, man, what is this? What is this stuff? <laughs> What is ha- just like a, you know, throw it to the big guy. He dribbles for like 10 seconds and maybe he throws it back out and then they repost and then they throw it up and it's rebound. Now you walk the other way. It's just not fun. Did you like this style of basketball? I kind of liked it. Okay. I kind of liked it. It made me right. a little bit happy to. Okay. It made me a little bit happy to see to see it playing out again. It reminded me of, of if you, met, you mentioned uh, 2003, that's a... The Spurs won a championship that year, and there was it was I think it was like game two or game three, maybe game four. But neither team made it to eighty points. The Spurs ended up losing by one. We scored seventy six points, seventy six to seventy seven. It was game four, seventy six to seventy seven. We lost that game. The other team scored seventy seven points and beat us. And watching this, it was like. It it started to get a little funny when you realize it does they're not gonna like, they yeah. might not break ninety they might yeah. this is the first the first time all season both teams didn't break ninety somebody's gonna score eighty points and win this game and then it becomes a little bit fun I don't think I want to see it a bunch of times but no I don't want to see it the entire league like this no 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 but it it, it does bring up two things you're mentioning here's number one. This is we're headed toward the playoffs now, so these are going to be conversations that that end up happening. Is is these are the games that you're going to play in the playoffs? Rudy Gobert had a quote after the game. Uh, this is a quote. It was just a very physical game. I thought there was there was a lot of touching, grabbing, just like a playoff game. Like that's what you get. This is what you're going to play. You're not going to play 146 to 143 every night. Every once in a while, sure, but it's made there. All the all the numbers drop in the all playoffs. The numbers drop. And all of a sudden, the, the we're starting to go like, okay, what happens to the Timberwolves when that happens? What happens when the pressure gets turned up a little bit and the shots aren't falling every single night rather than every so often? Is this gonna be? Is this gonna become a thing? Is this gonna become a thing? I don't know. I think Adam Silver is hoping that this won't become a thing. <laughs> he, does not want, he does not want a return to the nineties. No way. Oh. Oh my but goodness. I agree, you know, like uh, scoring absolutely will drop in the playoffs. There's, there's no question. No back to backs. Teams are prepping for one team for an entire two week stretch. They uh, they're gonna get uh, really really adept at just taking away first options and second options, and it's you're gonna see teams out of their comfort zone, which I can't wait for. I can't wait. Tell you what, I can wait for the next trophy, Chief Keith. That's that shit. I don't like trophy. Just giving out to a thing that happened. We just don't like it. We don't like it. I don't like it. This week's winner. Ugh, I'm so sick of these injuries. This week's winner again. Injuries. Jalen Brunson goes down. Scotty Barnes goes down. Russell Westbrook goes down. Giannis goes down. More and more and more and more and more. It feels like every single day they're telling us one of our favorite players is not going to be in the game. I hate it. I hate it. Just, I hate it. Man, when... um. So Jalen brought, first of all, I want to shout out the peroneal nerve, which I <laughs> learned about from Eric Friedman, MD, at Sports Injury MD on Twitter, who was the first to point out that uh, Jalen Brunson, who was injured like in the early, early moments of Nick's calves, um, he, he went up for a jumper at the left corner. Uh, left corner of the paint, like free throw extended, and 
it looked like a non-contact, but when you zoomed in, he did kind of bang knees. Mm -hmm. And Eric Friedman, MD, said, this is very reassuring. His lateral knee gets hit right before uh, uh, he jumps, could have caused a peroneal nerve contusion. And then it has since emerged, according to Ian Begley and and, uh, later confirmed by Nick's sources, that uh, Jalen Brunson has a knee contusion, but has avoided serious knee injury. So thank God, thank because thank there goodness. was a moment there where where when it was, it looked like non-contact, which is the worst. Non-contact is when a guy Absolute just goes worst. down, that's like, we're done for this, we're mm-hmm. finished. And that was the lowest I felt in a while. I was it's so bad. Like, I had to take a walk, like legitimately went outside and just took a walk for 20 minutes. Yeah. I was... Couldn't couldn't handle it. It was bad. You can't you can't do anything else. The non the non contact ones, man. You 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 can play back in your head when it happened to Kevin Durant in the finals, or when it happened to to Clay Thompson, or when it, when it happened to Kobe uh, when he tore his, his Achilles. Like you can picture those moments, and and you're just like, did this just happen to Jalen, who's having, as we've talked about time and time again, a movie like run through this through this season. This can't have possibly happen thank goodness that it didn't uh it's isn't it funny the thing of how you learn certain stuff you didn't know because of a basketball player you really like like you talk about this nerve that you learned about (laughs) as soon as you said that i started thinking oh i know what plantar fasciitis is (laughs) right because of tim duncan because of tim duncan that's the only reason and i know it's it's an inflammation of plantar fascia (laughs) like this is oh my god! We care about these people so much. I know I'm what so, a I'm so is. I know what a metatarsal of is. Not because of school, <laughs> not because they probably taught us that in school, but because of Shaq. Oh my goodness! Um, other injuries. Try, uh, future face of the league, Scotty Barnes, who was cr- who was like on a tear, had been had been crushing, like killing guys. Um, had surgery on his hand, broke a, uh, a bone in his hand. We mentioned Russell Westbrook, who will be missed, also went underwent surgery for his fractured hand. Uh, and then uh, Devin Booker for the injury hit Suns, just can't catch a break, uh, had a, had an ankle injury. And then uh, Giannis missed uh, the, the Bucks last game with an injury. So, man, everybody get healthy because we're coming down the stretch here. We want to see everybody healthy for the playoffs. Whoever's pressing that button, the injury stop. button, fucking Turn stop. Off. Fucking stop. Next trophy. Step Brothers Catalina Wine Mixer Trophy. Giving out to the oh, thing baby. we're most excited about for the upcoming week. Oh, baby. Oh, right. baby. I'm psyched up for this one. <laughs> this week's winner, Celtics Nuggets Thursday night basketball game. Go. Oh, my God. The, the presumed NBA Finals uh, picks for both conference. Yeah. We're going to get a little piece of it. Both teams are playing great. The Celtics are on an 11-game win, winning streak coming uh, off of having just throttled the Warriors. The Nuggets look like the Nuggets. They have just been so strong. The Celtics were puffing their chest out a bunch after they beat up on the Warriors. They and were. now and now, and now here they come. Here come them. Here they come. Here they come. The Celtics are plus 11.6 net rating. They, uh, In terms of regular season performances, this is like up there with the 73-win Warriors. Like this is a historic regular season team right now. After that game you mentioned, Jalen Brown was like, we feel like we're the best team in the league. Um, and, you know, we, they mentioned that this was, that game was like a little bit of payback for the finals loss. I'll, and I'll say this, and the thing I thought at the time was, well, I think we all agree that the road still goes through Denver, whatever Absolutely. the Celtics think. And secondarily, hold on a second. That was like the number 10 team in the West. Like let's, yeah. you killed them, but like, uh, uh, let's hold on a second. And now we're going to see it because now. Denver has been, I've not seen such an effective, like flip the switch from a championship team in a while. Maybe, you know, maybe like the, was it the 2001 Lakers who were just like joking around during the regular oh, season God. and then got what into a the horrible, horrible playoffs experience and then that lost was. one game total all throughout the playoffs. This, the, the, the Nuggets have done it in like a slow ramp up way. They've been, 
their clutch time defense has been elite, best in the best in the league. And what that tells you is they've been waiting for their moments to be like, okay, let's flex. And mm-hmm. that's all that against the, uh, against the Lakers was it was a perfect example. They were like, okay, let's pace ourselves with this team. And then it's like, okay, we're getting into like the mid third quarter, fourth quarter. Let's just flex on them and put these guys away. They've been doing that all the, like all season and particularly the last couple months. And then the Celtics have just been like, running over everybody. Of course, the Nuggets went into the Celtics' house, beat them there. Now let's see. I am so excited for this matchup. I can't what wait. What fun. What fun. Not the to Nuggets mention, are... the, the MVP debate, a lot of it is going to hinge, I think, on what happens in this game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Nuggets are 12-4 and four in games that were within five points in the last five minutes since mid-December. They're sort of doing the opposite of what we're watching the Timberwolves do now, which is when the game gets close, they sort of, they come alive. Will the Nuggets beat the Celtics or will the Celtics beat the Nuggets? Make a call right now. In de- I'm going to give it to the Nuggets. And and this is not a, this is not a reflection of what I think might happen in a potential finals matchup. I just think the Nuggets at home at altitude, very, very tough to beat. They're going to be up for the game. The Celtics are going to be up for it too. I would I would give the edge to the Nuggets. But if the Celtics win this game, man, that's a statement win. That's a, that's a statement win. But I'm going to pick Nuggets. Who do you pick? It really is. I'm, I'm picking the Nuggets too. I got to see the Celtics beat the Nuggets before I say that the Celtics can beat the Nuggets. Um, in a in a big game, I got to see it. I got to see it happen. I just really, really enjoy that the Nuggets are moving like champions now. They like, really are. You know, they there's really a weird are. period where you win the championship and you're like, oh, fuck, we're the champions. And it takes you a while to get comfortable in those shoes. And you either get really comfortable in those shoes or you don't. And they have gotten very comfortable in the shoes. And now they're like, we're the... We're the champ. Like you're, you're looking me in my eyes. We're the fucking champions. What are you doing? I mean, Jokic is carrying himself right now with a confidence that comes from understanding that no one can stop you. He's our Shaq. Like he's this generation Shaq, where there's nothing. There's legitimately nothing you can do. The only thing you could maybe do is like sign two or three like big guys to just burn fouls on him because that's it. Like there's no one person that can check him. You can maybe like give him a little bit of issues, but when it comes to like the skill that he has, his ability to play at his own pace, they're just super confident team. And then the Celtics are just a steamroller. Best, best starting five in the NBA. I can't, I can't wait. Can't it's wait. gonna be so good. It's gonna be so good. This is what we've been waiting for all season. You wanna do the little trophies? Let's do the little trophies. These ones change each week and are situation specific. They're for the smaller storylines that we want to mention, but don't need to get all the way into. My first little trophy, the Jake Gyllenhaal and end of watch. Hey, can I tell you a story? Here's a story about this, and a story about that, and a story about this, a story about that. Trophy. <laughs> To the Boston Celtics, we were just talking about them, who absolutely told a story to the Warriors, beating them by 52. Oh, Beating them by 52. You look at the... Oh, oh my God. Oh, God. Just when you started it, we were just starting to convince ourselves that the Warriors could, like, maybe they could cause some trouble in the playoffs. And then this happens, and you're like, ah. They They got told a story. That's a new thing I'm starting. You beat a team real bad, you told them a story. You told them a story. Man. That was a that was a butt whipping the likes of which I have not seen in a while. Wow, folks! <laughs> um, my first little trophy is the brick top in snatch. Do you know what nemesis means? A righteous infliction of retribution manifested by an appropriate agent, personified in this case by an horrible me. <laughs> Trophy <laughs> to Josh Hart for snatching Donovan Mitchell's chain after hitting a back-breaking shot to seal the like the underpowered Knicks win over <laughs> the Cleveland Cavaliers, who, as we have mentioned, have been on a tear. 
uh, t- number two team in the East. Knicks knocked them out of the playoffs as the underdog last season. The Cavs have done a lot of stuff to try and retool and and change their the way they play, get tougher, and none of it mattered because the Knicks just bullied the Cavaliers. Both without their uh, both teams without their uh, top players. Donovan Mitchell did not play. Jalen Brunson, of course, got injured early on. And man, Josh Hart snatching the chain off of Donovan Mitchell's <laughs> chest as he ran down the ran down the court. Crazy moment. <laughs> wow. My next little trophy, the Michael Pena and end of watch. I'm doing all end of watch. Yes, yeah, like, <laughs> I'm doing all end of watch. <laughs> I love this movie. The Michael Pena and end of watch. Yeah, I want to fight you. Let's go, bro. Hell no, but you called me out, bro. I'm calling you out. What's up? Ah, what a great scene that is. If you have, if you have, if you're listening to the show and you haven't watched that movie, go watch that movie. You're gonna love it. Anyway, we're giving that trophy to referee Tony Brothers, who gave DeJounte <laughs> Murray a technical foul because I Murray know, wouldn't talk to him. Who was this? <laughs> <laughs> There, it's a timeout. Murray DeJounte is sitting over on the bench, minding his business. Here comes Tony Brothers to talk about who knows what. DeJounte won't talk to him, just sort of blows him off. And then he and then Tony Brothers is like, all right, well, fuck you. Here's a technical foul. I want to fight you. For no reason. For no reason. This goes Man. up there with Joey Crawford giving Tim Duncan a technical foul on the bench because Tim Duncan was laughing. This is like this is crazy behavior. The refs are wilded, man. They're they're, wilded they're fighting back. Season. They are fighting they're back. They're wild in they're- this season. <laughs> I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. No, I don't like it. <clears throat> My second little trophy is the cold play clocks trophy to Anthony Edwards, who was late <laughs> late to the game versus the Blazers, <laughs> and uh, therefore had to come off the bench. When asked what happened, he said, quote, I just lost track of time. (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, sometimes it happens. You lose track of time. You lose track of time. One time one time I had a a meeting that I was supposed to be at and I totally just whiffed on it i was down uh, there's there was at the time the the building i was officing out of downstairs on the bottom floor like one building over two buildings over there was a candy store and i was just over there buying candy right buying candy buying candy and then i get a text from uh i think i think you know justin and pat um justin halpern and pat schumacher they're they're uh, tv people right and I get a text from Justin and he's like, hey, are you, you're supposed to be in this meeting right now. Is everything okay? And I was like, oh, fuck. And I like ran the over team, to the- uh, The to, team behind Abbott Elementary, <laughs> Shane yeah. just casually blowing them <laughs> off. <laughs> I, ran, I ran over, yeah, they did Abbott Elementary, they did Harley Quinn. They're really talented people. Uh, I ran over to the office, I like logged into the meeting and I get on there, everybody's on the Zoom, they're all just sort of looking at me and I was like, oh man, I'm so sorry, I was- I was downstairs buying candy. And then one of the, <laughs> this was like a, like a, with the studio. And then somebody from the studio was like, oh, Justin told us you had like a family emergency. And I was like, oh no, that's not, <laughs> I was buying, <laughs> I was buying some Kit Kats and Twix. <laughs> oh man, what a jackass I was. My last little trophy, the Jake Gyllenhaal and end of watch. Follow me into the house, dude. I want to be a detective. Follow me into the house, dude. Follow me into the house. Trophy. Ah, don't follow him in there, Michael Pena. I'm screaming at the TV. Don't follow him in that house, Michael Pena. Anyway, that trophy to Russell Westbrook, who is building affordable housing units in Los Angeles, which fucking rules. Shout out Russell awesome. Westbrook. Seriously. I will, fo- I will follow Rus- Russell Westbrook Much into needed. any house. Into any house. He's always doing good shit and cool shit. We always. Need it. We need it, folks. My final little trophy is the Denzel in John Q. Oh, yes. I am not going to bury my son. My son is going to bury me. Trophy to Doc Rivers of the Bucks. Listen, we, 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 we talked bad about him when it was looking cheeky and Doc was saying wild stuff about how he didn't really even want to take the job. And then when he did take the job, he was like, can we wait till after the All-Star break? Well, maybe... 
Maybe they should have listened to him because the Bucks are six and zero oh since Uh-oh. the All Star break, Uh-oh. unbeaten defense, looking sturdier. And here come the Bucks, second in the East now, above the Cleveland Cavaliers, looking dangerous, looking mean, looking stronger. Shouts to the Bucks. Shouts to Doc. I want to see the Celtics in the finals. I want to see Celtics Nuggets, but you start watching the Bucks and you're like, eek! What happens if they beat the Celtics? Eek! What they happens? can do it. Oh God. oh God! Oh God! I think that's it, Jason. We did it again. Did Another it again. perfect episode. I love it. I can't believe we've never made a mistake. It's crazy. Like not one. Not one. I mean, has that ever happened before? I don't think so. I think that's why we're the award-winning Six Trophies that's right. podcast. We close every episode just by saying the names of underappreciated old basketball players with no context at all while the theme music carries us out. Jerry, will you play the theme music, please? I'm Shay Serrano. That's Jason Concepcion. Producer Zuri in the shadows making the noises. See y'all next week. Michael Pena. I'm doing the, I'm doing the cast of End Watch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pacific Northwest legend Luke Ridnauer. <laughs> uh, Los Angeles Police Department legend Jake Gyllenhaal. Knicks legend Francisco Garcia. <laughs> uh, acapella legend Anna Kendrick. She's great in this. French legend Michael Petrus. She gave the biggest monologue of the biggest movie of the year, America Ferrera. Nice. Mexican legend Eduardo Nahara. <laughs> Frank Grillo. Oh, the movie girls. superstar. I love the girls. <laughs> uh, Lithuanian legend.